What's up guys, it's Bronley Empire Barbell and today I wanna to talk a little bit about posture and positioning while squatting. So I just did a few videos on bracing and breathing and posture and all that, which I'm absolutely huge on, but now I wanna to try to bridge that a little bit into how we start to apply that to compound movements. Now, especially, it's not as big of a topic now, but when CrossFit first started getting big, every video seemed to be about the butt wink. You had people that would obsess over little uh, changes and deviations from form, and it would be a reason for somebody to sideline their squat progression early on to just fixate on that one thing. Now, I wanna address that a little bit because it is overblown and it has caused more people to become hypersensitive to things that aren't that big of a deal. However, I also want you to be aware of the implications of it and what it means as far as your ability to demonstrate control over your positioning under heavy loads. So if you think about any Olympic weightlifter you've ever seen, I can't think of one off the top of my head, I'm sure they're out there, but typically you don't see something like a butt wing. Typically you see lifters that start in a completely neutral position, hips are neutral, lower back's neutral, and as they squat, the positioning of their back, as low as they get, their butt is that far off the ground, and what you see is the angle that the hip is set at tends to stay exactly the same. That's the one thing that blows my mind about these group of athletes, that whether they're the lightest guys or the biggest, whether it's the males or the females, they all demonstrate a very similar ability to be brutally strong and explosive while also maintaining this kind of above standard level of mobility or flexibility or positioning that the general population doesn't have and most recreational lifters surely don't have. So that tends to fly in the face of a lot of wisdom about how oh, stretching will make you weak or kill gains or whatever. Every single one of you could probably deal with better flexibility and mobility. You don't have to be a contortionist. You just have to find what that minimum standard is that allows you to get into position and stay healthy and do things to keep you there. Don't wait until it gets down here before you start doing things to bring you back up. It should be routine. That's how we avoid injury and we can do this and progress longer. So a normal lifter, or what you tend to see is a normal lifter that if their hips are right here, as they squat down, they get to a point where they run into a wall and the hips have to tuck under. And I've actually been guilty of that. When I'm, I'll show you mine, when I am not concentrating on my position because I tend to stand with an anterior pelvic tilt as it is, this is how I tend to stand naturally without thinking about it. I tend to have my hips rocked back, my belly's open, my abdominals are stretched, and right now my glutes and my hamstrings are stretched and my lower back is tight. So as I come down, this arching position actually makes it harder, aside from taking your spine out of alignment, your hips out of alignment, it actually makes it harder to get range. So what people find is as they're arching, they come down, they get to a point where they're tight and they hit a wall, and the hips have to roll under to be able to get deep, to be able to get into position. The idea is, and this is where practicing this posture comes in, the idea is that you set the, you tighten the glutes and hamstrings, you start with them short, that sets the hip in a neutral position. You wanna make sure it's neutral and it's not excessively tucked, and that takes practice. But that sets it in a neutral position. Now my abdominals are short, so my ribs are now tied into my hips. My bracing is immediately better, and I'm less likely to get a back pump. And as I keep my glutes tight and I maintain this position into the hole, I find that I am able to get much lower and also execute the movement without such a substantial butt wink or change in hip position. Now this is where there's a little bit of subtlety and nuance because while the butt wink has been overblown in the past and it's, it might not be the thing that takes you out now, it is a sign that you don't have the type of control that you want. Just like when we bench press, we move at the shoulder joint but we don't want the joint itself moving as we press. The hips are headquarters. They are the cornerstone of all the movement that goes on in the squat and deadlift. So while you're expressing all of this power, all of this movement out of your hip joint, it stands to reason that you probably shouldn't want the actual angle of your hip changing. And if any of you have ever had a tweak from squatting, a back tweak, or have tweaked your back doing something else and tried to squat, you probably notice that it hurts the most if you try squatting again as you come down right at that point where everything tucks under because that's putting your lumbar spine through some flexion and extension, which again, in the, in the face of a tweak or some injury, not ideal, not ideal at all. Just like all the other practice we did, learning how to brace, going through all the pains of these movements to try and make yourself more efficient, more injury proof, learning how to brace requires getting your abdominals to learn how to limit motion in the spine 
right? While the rest of your limbs are moving and while other forces are trying to move you out of position. So we wanna be able to get to a point where we can move and put our limbs through this full deep range of motion without our spine getting taken out of position because that means those bracing muscles are giving at some point. The things that have helped me, the setup, has been imagining the position I'm in while I do the 90-90 breathing, while I do dead bugs, while I do these anti-rotation movements to figure out how to connect my ribs into my hips, diaphragm on top of the pelvic floor, right? You don't want a dented can. If I'm in this an excessive anterior pelvic tilt, the way I normally stand, I already feel my lower back tighten up when I do that. My ribs are flared, so my diaphragm's pointed up. My hips are uh, pointed down, so my pelvic floor is pointed down. That creates this pinch point. It's like a dented can, and it's not gonna be able to handle the, the pressure as easily and as securely as if they were stacked right on top of each other. So, ribs connected down to the hips. I am in a neutral pelvic position, and I'm focusing on bracing to keep my spine secure, but to also keep my hips in the same position. If my hips stay in the same position, it stands a reason that I should be more efficient when I go to move at the actual hip joint, as opposed to if it's destabilized because my hips are rolling at the bottom. So once I'm in that position, I focus on keeping this tension and this is where a lot of you guys run into trouble. Same thing when I'm trying to get down to a deadlift, I'm trying to hinge into this position without losing that hip position. So this is where most of you guys struggle. It's counterintuitive to keep your glutes tight while also breaking at the hip. And most of you will find that you start to shake a little bit, it's a little uncomfortable, and that's okay. It's just practice. Do it in front of a mirror and uh, do it as part of your warm ups. Look at yourself over and over and over and look for that hip shift to be eliminated. Once you get a handle on that, by having your glutes short and staying short throughout the bottom and the change of direction, you're gonna get a ton more power. Your start on the deadlift is going to be way more aggressive. I'm telling you, the first time you do it right, you're like, holy crap, what have I been doing this whole time? So that's what we're looking for. So once again, I'm gonna take the bar out in position. If I'm lazy, okay, ribs are flared. I, right now, I already feel my hamstrings, my glutes are stretched, which is gonna run me into a wall earlier. I'm gonna have less range. Okay, I feel my abs are weak. I feel my lower back's cramping up a little bit. And as I try to squat down, if I just squat down without thinking about it, I already felt a lot going on in my lower back right there. And that's no bueno. So instead, I'm gonna root myself into the ground. Okay, glutes are tight. Okay, ribs are down. Ooh, and you feel that tension. When you're not flexible, you feel that tension in your hips and your quads, but that's a good thing. Okay, and I'm gonna maintain. I got my cannonball breathing. My abdominals are tight and braced. My glutes are tight. I'm going to hinge while keeping tension on my hips to keep them in that position. Abs are tight. I'm coming down, 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 down. And I'm gonna reverse direction just like that. Now I'll be the first to tell you I'm still chipping away at this. I had a lot of movement dysfunction for a lot of years and got strong in spite of it, but I also got injured. So I make mistakes, remember, so you don't have to. So this still needs work and it's something I'm still applying practice to. But every time I do it right, the rep moves better. It feels better. When I execute this on maximal lifts, I know when I'm set up correctly and I know before I even move into the bar whether it's going to go or not. And that has just been, it's been a huge psychological boost to know that I have this newfound control over the way I move and then it's gonna keep me healthier and performing better for longer. So these are the things I recommend you focus on with your squat and then taking that into your deadlift, hips neutral, spine neutral, ribs down, connected to your hips. And remember the glutes starting short. That's the mental cue that really had it click for me. It's not, it's not having my glutes and hamstrings stretched in this position, but having them starting short because a shorter muscle is a much stronger muscle. It's a lot more efficient. So I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions. Leave them in the comment box, leave a thread on the forum. Thanks for watching guys. This is Bromley from Empire Barbell. Until next time, I'll see you.